Okay. Welcome to Astrology Today, coming to you live from beautiful Sunshine Coast and the Cassette region, which is situated on the traditional lands of the Klahoman Nation. I will be your host, Maureen Reed, and I am an astrologer. And welcome to you, the listener, and to Jill Kirby from Victoria. Hi, Jill. Hello. And Jenna from North Van? North Van. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Jenna. Hi. Say hi. There you are. There you are. <laughs> okay, so to follow along with today's episode, if you dare, um, you can go to the visuals, which are on my website, cardinalastrology.ca, under the radio tab. And this is episode 142. And to the listeners, I apologize profusely because this is not an episode for the faint of heart. <laughs> Both Jill and Jen are going, I know nothing about what you're about to talk about. Um, and so, but I want to get it recorded. I want it to be there in the archives, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so what I'm going to talk about today is an ancient technique that was started in the Hellenistic era. It actually followed through in Western astrology up until uh, William Lilly, which was in the 1600s, and he wrote a very famous text called Christian Astrology. But by the time distributions had gotten to him, it had actually warped quite a bit. And by the time I entered astrology and Jill too, back in the 70s, it had vanished. It wasn't even there. Matter of fact, most people would not be able to tell you what the bounds are. And that is something that I will be talking about. So what I'm about to kind of download is the outline, the sketch of what distributions through the bounds were. They were a time lord technique. Um, and my attempt at explanation is coming via Ben Dykes, who uh, translated, has translated many of the ancient texts. And one of them was Abu Mashar, who wrote extensively on uh, some of these Time Lord techniques. And so that's my background in it. Um, I'm doing a study that will, I didn't at first think I was going to incorporate this um, uh, distribution through the bounds. But then I found a program that made calculating them, yay, really simple. And so I am, I've added it in. So this is also a new system for myself. Now, Time Lords basically are attempting to describe thematically um, and to some degree activities and people that come forward in a person's life based on the original natal promise. And so um, from their point of view, um, you had to... Um, um, you had to understand what the natal promise was, but not everything was active all at once, like as soon as you were born. It wasn't all just there and happening. Um, instead, they used various timing techniques to indicate when certain parts of the chart were like lit up and on and activated. And so this is, this particular technique, distributions through the bounds, um, does, you know, sort of march around the chart um, in various uh, degrees, pinging off of uh, the natal planets. Now it can ping directly or it can ping by aspect. And in this particular system, it, you need to use whole sign houses um, and you need to just use the traditional planets. Um, now, obviously, since the ancient times, we've added three new planets who totally have impact in our lives, no question. Um, but for this particular discussion, um, you know, I'm not including them. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to give you a visual of are the actual um, distribution or not the distribution, the bounds. Okay. So I am going to share my screen in hopes that this works. Well, there they are. Okay. So what I've put up for those who are listening is a table that basically, um, 
shows for each of the signs. So there's a chunk. Now, with the bounds, they only used the five planets. They didn't use the lights. And so we only have Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, Mars, and Saturn. But in each of the sign signs, they all have a little chunk. Okay, so for instance, with myself, my ascendant is at uh, 28 degrees Aries. And so the first chunk that my life started with was the last chunk of Aries, which is uh, the bound Lord, and that's the terminology they used, was Saturn. Now, for instance, for Jill, hers was Mars. And yours is in Virgo, and you're at 10? Yeah. Jenna? Okay, yeah. so your initial bound lord is Venus. Okay, now the odd degree things is a product of the great years of the planets. And so the accumulation, like if you add up all of the Jupiters through all 12 signs, you will come up with the number of years that is considered for Jupiter to be the great years of Jupiter. And the same with Venus, the same with Mercury, the same with Mars. And so they take their percentage. Now, you might imagine that each of these degrees might be worth a year. That might make it really simple, right? You know, so like every... You know, there would be 30 years to get through a particular sign. Um, and then, you know, the um, then you would know, you know, which bound you were entering into for each year. No, 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 no. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is not the case. And why is that not the case? So um, if you imagine the elliptic, OK, which is that belt of the signs, right? that the ancients would watch rise and, you know, they had all the math down and so they could calculate your ascendant and stuff. But what they noticed is that at certain times of the year and at certain latitudes, latitude is the key thing, how long it takes for an ascendant to move across the, you know, like for the ascendant to move across a particular sign. And Jill and I both have experienced this with the fun job of trying to do rectification, you know, because some signs take forever to rise and some of them are really quick, right? So there is what is called um, uh, fast ascensions and slow ascensions. And that is literally a visual. Now, of course, uh, we use a tropical zodiac, which, you know, unfortunately, there aren't dotted lines out there in the sky indicating where Aries starts and where, you know, Taurus starts and blah, blah, blah. But we base it on the equinoxes and the solstice. So mathematically, we can create dotted lines in the sky. But depending on where you're standing on the earth, how fast a particular sign rises or how slow changes. Yeah, and in the Western, we call it signs of long ascension or signs of short ascension. Exactly, exactly. So when we take this idea of uh, moving the ascendant, which in ancient times was primarily um, seen as the indicator for the person's life, and we start moving it in sign order, okay, we have to move it according to the ascensional times. Oh, I give up. There we go. Um, through the ascensional times, depending on the latitude, okay? So I'm going to stop this share and I'm going to show you a new screen. Oh, which was that screen too? Oh, but if I do that, I'll lose it. No, I'm not going to do that. Darn. Okay. So I did go to, I'll just come back to this. I did go to um, astroseek.com and you can pull up a table of ascensions and it, you know, for the geeky math types, they're going to enjoy looking at it. 
<laughs> but for those of us who prefer somebody else to do all the geeky calculating. And what you will see is that uh, the fast ascensions and the slow ascensions are reversed if you were born south of the equator. Right, so if Aries is long for us, Aries would be short for them. If Capricorn is short for us, it would be long for those born in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, so what they are proposing, and here I'll bring you down to, so this table translates into what it might look like here. Now this is my chart, and as you can see, um, so Aries starts with a Jupiter bound, then Venus, yes. then Mercury, then Mars, then Saturn. And then it starts again, right? Oh, I've got, oh, I can't believe I'm being interrupted again. I can't answer. <laughs> At the front door. I don't know where he is. It's the, it's the doctor <laughs> next door. Oh. oh. Anyway, <laughs> I should put on a big dis don't disturb sign. On and air. I, and I, yeah, on, exactly. On, on air. On air. And I have no idea what he wants. But anyway, my husband is, of course, upstairs, completely oblivious to all of this. Anyway, hopefully he start, stops asking. But anyway, <laughs> shit. This is another one of those pieces I wish I knew how to edit out, but I don't. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so what they're proposing is that the ascendant moves do, 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 like this. And because of the latitude that you were born, it will, during the course of your life, because there's one technique where that's what you do, you take the natal ascendant and you move it through, um, through the course of a life. And in my particular case, I'm, I'll be lucky if I get past cancer. So due to the fact that, you know, slow ascensions and fast ascensions, I'm only going to get this far. And I have a demo of this, which, okay. So if you click on the picture, you get a version that's way more easier to see. Yeah. So here we go. Um, I start with a Saturn. Um, bound because that's the last degrees of Aries and you can see here then it uh, when I turned 11 months old it went into Taurus when I turned and this gives you your age also you know so at 18 years seven months and 14 days to be exact <laughs> I went into Gemini in 1972 and then at 45 years of age uh, nine months and three days I went into Cancer and oh no i guess i do get to leo pardon me <laughs> well at least i hope if i make it to 83 i will be in leo but you can see how this goes now the bound lord is what these represent okay so saturn then venus mercury jupiter and so if we how do i close this out i don't know how to close this out hmm Hmm. I will stop the share and come back. Escape. Yes. Well, if I hit, yeah, there's a problem with using escape though, sometimes. Oh, and that didn't work. All right. Um, oh, why do I have this technical? <laughs> Did that know that that's just good. Downloads that's good. It? download it? All yeah. right. I'll try hitting escape. Nope, that didn't work. All right. F11. That'll work. No, nope, that didn't work either. Well, yeah. I'll be. <laughs> and for We're those back here, share screen. We'll <laughs> for those folks video. who are listening to, oh, there it is. Okay, yay. I'll close oh, it and then go back to the website. Yeah. Oh, I have a technical wizard with me. Yay, Jenna. Just, just a millennial. <laughs> just a, well, hey, <laughs> that counts, right, Jill? <laughs> Yeah. okay so <laughs> where was i going with that right I, so obviously i will get into you know this little part here of leo um you know if i live long and healthy which would you know we can hope for <laughs> we can okay so let me show another example so here's jill's 
Okay, so Taurus starts in Libra. And again, depending on whether they're fast rising or slow rising, and I do know how to get out of this now, once I get there. All right, and part of the reason is, is I go big, so I'm not gonna go big. Um, so here we do, we start um, at the very end of Libra, so it's Mars. And what's interesting is the bounds at the end of the sign always end with one or two of the malefics. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I've heard that they've given for that is there is a, a deterioration at the end of a sign, um, sort of a collapsing or something so that things can start fresh in the next sign. But sometimes like between Libra and Scorpio, you know, she had many years. So from zero age until 12 years old, uh, Mars was sort of doing its thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it went to a Venus. I'm sure that when she turned 12, are you thinking that when you turn 12, things got a little lighter in your life? Uh, not no. till after that. Cause... Not till after that. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. A lot of conflict between my parents. Well, not that they fought openly. <laughs> it was more Scorpio kind of. Yes. Under... Well, you were in a Scorpio period. Until... Undercurrents and stuff. And then. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, dad didn't leave till I was turn just about turning 14. So. Ah, Okay. So until after that Venus period, Venus, Venus. Ah, okay. So th that's the kind of detail that I'm curious about to just see how reflective these things are. Um, and so part two of this is, this is supposed to relate directly back to the natal chart. And so if we go back to her chart, so she starts in a Venus period and then it switches to Mars and see how Mars straddles both Libra and uh, Scorpio. So then we look at, so where's Venus? So Venus is here, it's in Capricorn and it's the fourth house. So this is not a particularly happy Venus, although uh -huh. it's in mutual reception to Saturn. But it's also in a grand cross. Yeah, and this is, because this is a night chart, Saturn is the malefic, not of the sect of favor. So he gets to be malefic uh, to his heart's content. Um, and it's overcoming that Venus, right? So conditions in the home, Venus in the fourth, but she rules the second. So it would have things to do with finance and she rules that moon that's up here in the eighth. So, yeah, hmm. had a major impact on identity and, you know, trust and all of that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to look at nicer periods, I hope. <laughs> Not decent. <laughs> so, okay. So then, you know, we get out of that, we go into a Mercury period, lots of learning. Um, what was the ruler of your, okay, so Saturn was also the ru ruler of your fifth house. Didn't mm -hmm. interfere with you having children per se, other than mm -hmm. um, you did have some miscarriages, so that would be a Saturn influence, but it didn't block it completely, which is, yay. Well, the miscarriages were after I'd had three. Yeah, yeah, easy, yeah. Pre easy pregnancies. So. Ah, there you go. And when did you first start having children? Age 21. So that would have been Mercury, Mercury Sun. And had you stopped having children by 29? Or is that when the problem yeah. started? Yeah. No, I had, I, yeah, my yeah. youngest daughter was born when I was 27. Right. Because there's three. So that was totally the, yeah, the Mercury Sun combination. So Mercury is in the fourth, the sun is in the fifth, makes total sense. And then after it shifted, so then it went to sun Jupiter and all of a sudden everything was a no, which is interesting. Sun Jupiter, oh, well, that's, uh, Jupiter is in Aries. We'll opposing Saturn. Mars, opposing Saturn. Yeah, that would do it. Yeah, hmm. well. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's one of uh, one of one level. We're not. Um, I'm not anticipating that the distribution through the bounds for the life are going to do anything but just give big backdrop pictures. Okay, that's my yeah. question. Is like, yeah, how predominant are these themes? That uh, they. I think, the, I think the rule of three, and I think Jill would agree with me here, you have to see an indicator on more than one level, oh, whether yeah. it's by transit, by progression, by possibly this method. Yeah, there has to be more than one, you know, yeah. arrow pointing <laughs> right. you know, for things to manifest. Yeah. So let's let's go and have a look at Jenna's. So that was yours. Okay, so, and again, like I say, we've got them in readability, if you click on the uh, picture. So this is the life, we start with Venus, um, mm. and, you know, we quickly switch to Jupiter, and then we have Mars, so if we go back to her chart, you know, so here we go, Venus, then Jupiter, then Mars, then Saturn. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. This is moving and the amount of time it takes to move is dependent on the latitude that you were born. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so because of the whole idea of fast ascensions and slow ascensions, um, that's what creates the diff the variability because otherwise we all have this same list of bounds going all the way around the chart. Yeah, they just have a different rhythm to them. There's exactly. different stars yeah. at different times. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so, um, so we have, and the other thing that I will point out, which I had to figure out is this side here, see how it says distributor, that is the bound Lord. So this, this line is the bound Lord. And then there is always a partner. Now, when you first start in a life, what you have to do is look for the last aspect, even though, you know, you weren't born yet, um, that the ascendant made before it got to the degree it was. And so I did work that out for everybody. And so the at last aspect that the ascendant made was a sextile to your Mars. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the list, so the partner here um, you would write in is Mars and it stays Mars, even though oh. the bound Lord changes until we get to the moon and then the partner <laughs> changes. Okay, so this was Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Mars, 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 and then we go to Mars, moon. So if we take those first ones, so we have, we start with Venus. So this would be 10th house. Um, she rules the ninth and the second. So, you know, it would be interesting to just describe the context in which you were born into um, because it should pull in the themes of the ninth, the second, the 10th, and because Mars is the partner, um, you would look at if there was any relationship between the two, and there aren't. There isn't only in the sense that the moon rules this, and the moon is with um, Venus, so it would pull it in. Um, and then you would also look at what Mars rules, which would be Aries and the third. So in that first year of life, what was the context? context of my first year of my life yeah where was your dad I, I mean my yeah my my parents were together but I always sense that the relationship kind of fizzled out I don't know like maybe after my brother was sometime after my brother was born and before I was born and then it became oh, like okay. a we both want children type of thing right um uh, but my, both my parents have very different parenting styles, uh, right. very different personalities, but very passionate and like competitive. Oh, so Mars. I'm, that's so Mars. Venus Mars. Yep. Venus Mars. They're always competing to see who is the better parent. 
and it oh, wow. wasn't it wasn't a good thing yeah. I didn't like it I was <laughs> no probably not he'd be like you know <laughs> yeah if you didn't perform according to what their parenting style oh yeah no that would yeah. have been pretty yeah it was like all about them and not right. about what was best for me as a kid so I, I definitely so did that last until like when did they actually split up Oh, when I was, when I was seven or eight. Okay. So that would have been still in that Venus Mars. And then it would have shifted to Jupiter Mars. Okay. So Jupiter is 12th and it would have called in the seventh and the fourth. So did you move? When I was nine. Is that what that said? Yeah. Yeah. We did. Yeah, my, I lived, I went back and forth, like living right, with my between. mom and my dad. And then we, my mom and I moved into a place that she's still in. Right. Um, okay. And yeah. And I also okay. see that as like my creativity. Like that was when I was like, okay, I like, I need to paint and I need to like, I want to be a to be, to, yeah. yeah, I want to be, want to be in the theater. And not, nine was when they put me in in theater classes oh wow yeah okay. yeah I think they saw that I was really struggling from the divorce and then yeah I was a creative kid so they put me in they put me in yeah Sweet. like drama classes right well yeah, yeah. um son she uh, just before we went on air Jill she was talking about possibly writing a script oh yeah um, <laughs> Mercury Sun in the eighth house, you could write a juicy script. I could write a, I know, I know. I, I, and that's what I did in, in high school. That was the last time I wrote a script and I've done some like one act stuff, but I know it's like, I can feel my writer inside of me. He's like, why do I, are you suppressing me? Let me out. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so um, what can I say about my life bounds? Um, so, we can come back to yours, Jill. Um, the one I was going to point out for me was when I went traveling. And so I, it actually happened in the spring of 1974. So I was in a Mercury, Mercury. So double Mercury. And um, I had just come off of Mars, Mercury. So I was struggling. Um, if we go, I'll go back to my charts. So where am I here? here I am. Okay, so I have Mercury in the eighth and uh, I have Mars in the seventh. And so they're not aspecting each other other than uh, Mars rules that Mercury can't help it out. Mars is rather debilitated where it's sitting. And so I was struggling and um, and it was on the auspices of the guy I was dating at the time, Mercury Mars, <laughs> where I decided that, oh, yeah, it's OK. I can go try hitchhiking, whatever. Oh. Anyway, um, now there were other things behind it that also, you know, pointed like, for instance, here's the classic um, Neptune went exactly trying my Jupiter the week that I left to go to Florida. Yeah. And that's by progression. So yeah, I very delusionally headed out on the road trip of a lifetime. And fortunately, because Jupiter is next to my part of fortune, I actually survived. <laughs> yes, which is, you know, uh, I had an overworked um, guardian angel. <laughs> so and if, if I was to characterize that um, time frame, give it a theme, it was I was learning about real life. Mm. Um, and because Mercury rules, um, not only, uh, you know, is it in the eighth house, but it rules the sixth of downtrodden people. And that's what the sixth in ancient would say. And also the third, which is, you know, your immediate neighborhood community. And so I ended up traversing through a totally eighth house environment for a year. Um, and because of my guardian angel, Jupiter, part of fortune, 
I survived the downtrodden people and actually came to know and understand them, Mercury, Mercury, you know, like to gain some real life experiences. So for me, it kind of made sense. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, so let me just see. So the partner, um, what they're saying with the partnership, let's go back here to Jill's. Okay, so for instance, um, when that Venus Jupiter happened um, and the whole, I've got to change my life thing. So Jupiter is where in your chart? Well, that, uh, change, the changing the life thing happened a little later. After 1981? Yeah, because 82 is when I had two miscarriages and the marriage broke up. Yes. Okay. Exploded. So <laughs> that went, okay. So you were in a Jupiter sun until 1988. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Jupiter sun ruled that whole period of time or didn't rule it, but they pointed at what themes would be up. So it would have been partnerships. Mm -hmm. Jupiter also uh, ruled the sixth of health issues. It also ruled the third of community. Okay. Um, and the sun, obviously fifth house, but the sun rules the 11th house. So one could easily say that, um, you know, a change <laughs> Jupiter um, on a fairly grand scale. Well, I also, after we split up, I did end up going back to university for a while. Oh, okay. Okay. I finished my second year, but then that was, you know, then well, I had to. Yeah, you had start. three kids. Well, yeah, and he, my ex didn't want to pay alimony anymore. And so, yeah, he wanted to get his master's. He oh, want, yes. He didn't yeah. want me to get an, an education. He never finished. Oh, my God. Uh, but yeah, I convinced the judge that not to, you know, to drop the alimony. So I had to get what? one. And she had three kids. She had three kids. And this oh, is, what? so well, in- I mean, I was doing child support, which was pretty minimal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. In, in the Hellenistic model, Jupiter is open, or not Jupiter, but seventh house can be open enemies. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So- and that, of course, would bring in the second house of finances with, with Mars. Mars rules that, so that would indicate. And Mars in the second house is spending money. So marrying a man that spends money. Yeah, yeah well, he never knew how much money. I always managed the money because he never knew how much he had. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he'd take out money and wonder, you know, oh, where did I spend that? It's not in my wallet anymore. Oh God! Yes. Yes. Oh, well. so, yeah. But fortunately, I did manage the money because when we were going through the whole dis divorce thing, the discovery, um, he was trying to basically hide the, ah. sav the savings that we had. But I had a record of how much right. we had in savings, <laughs> so you know, yeah, caught him out on that. He, did, he, he went so far as to take it out because he had it in the teacher's credit union, which I couldn't access. Right. Yeah. And sure. yet, but he, he obviously didn't feel that was safe enough. So he took it out of there and apparently put it in one of his dad's accounts. <laughs> oh, wow. I know. Oh. I know. Because well, oh. I might have, you know, he might have had to, you know, support his kids more. <laughs> anyway. uh. Yeah, so, you know, it is yep. what it is. Yep. It doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Yes. So basically. And also, and also in Western, that was, you know, the Pluto Saturn. Oh, yes, and, yes, exactly. But, there were other things that backed that period of time up. It was a, totally. uh, yeah. a huge, huge year all around. Yeah, yeah. And so, so as you can see, some of these last a long time. So that particular pairing of Jupiter with the sun lasted until 1988, right? Mm -hmm. And so you will notice when you get your list that, you know, some of them, because here we are at 90 years of age, 
and it's quite short. So obviously your ascendant was going through long ascension. Oh yeah, Libra's ascendant. Libra's ascendant, long ascension. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, now you are, where are you? You're here, Mercury, Saturn, which I find kind of interesting given that your Mercury is in Capricorn and Pluto is on it. So the frustration of Saturn, Mercury, um, it, yeah and then you get saturn saturn yeah that's 2024 so we want you to to get really buff because <laughs> she's broken too many bones she's broken too many bones oh, and no. I, yes and i need her as a co-presenter so it's saturn like, saturn <laughs> i mean i didn't break a bone till i you know 2019 you know yes I mean, and that was mercury saturn that was mercury saturn my life and then you know yeah and then it. so between uh, then and now she's already broken and you know something again so we've got to we got to bubble wrap you well and, until and after it was my arm which is very mercurial yeah yeah so we have to keep you in bubble wrap at Literally least until 2030, Mercury. maybe past. <laughs> God, because see, it doesn't change out of Saturn until it gets down here to Mars. So what they say is that when the partner doesn't change, that it builds on a theme. Bubble wrap. Yep, I think it's the only way we can go, Jill. Well, Saturn, you know, can protect. <laughs> What does Saturn rule in your chart? Saturn uh, is the fourth and oh, in the your fifth. system, yeah, in your system, it's, yeah. the fourth. it's in third in mine, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So the fourth and the fifth. So at least it's not the sixth. Yes. So yeah. you may break things, but you will live. Good. Well, and Saturn, Saturn is both, right? <laughs> Chet has shaken her head. <laughs> Saturn, give her hope. Give her a <laughs> yeah, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. Saturn is bones, right? Yes, so, exactly. And so he, know has, he has Saturn in the first house in this model, right? And so bones will be a thing. Okay. Um, but it's also, <laughs> this woman has an amazing voice, right? So mm -hmm. that Saturn has, because that Saturn is exalted, it's in the 12th, it's on the 12th house side of her ascendant. And so her, her, voice is amazing yeah oh i didn't know that yeah moon, well moon and taurus is also the throat and stuff so yeah exactly people with taurus stuff off and sing yes yeah. yes yeah she yes. sings in a choir you still you're still singing in that choir no no no, no. Nobody, nobody was singing in choirs for two uh, years right and that, now they've they've had a wrap-up concert because they he decided not to bring us back together again. So. Uh, oh, you're kidding. Which is fine. I was done with it anyway. It was not. Uh, well, you yeah. were in that for a long time. 18 years, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that was, is a nodal cycle, by the way. And the last few years were not, you know, I mean, the, the first 12 years were great. And yeah. then, you know, it changed too much. And he's, the, he started dumbing down the music. It wasn't as interesting. And yeah, just. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I wasn't that upset. Although I missed the last concert we did because because I broke my wrist the night of the uh, out the night after our dress rehearsal. Oh. <laughs> so I guess I was supposed to make a clean break of it with the group. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she has these really bad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Mercury Saturn thing. Well, of course it is. Of course it is. A rise sense of humor. Yes, so that is yeah. right. That is right. Okay, so you can pair with. Um, so let's go over to Jenna's. So you can also pair with the different bound lords. Okay, um, the closest planet that aspects that in the natal chart and so this is we're st talking specifically here of when you're doing your distributions through the bounds for life and so for instance for jenna when saturn is the bound lord there's so much saturn i know i know 
Um, then for you, it's Venus. You and I have the same problem. My Saturn and my Venus go together too. Yeah. Okay, Mars, it doesn't aspect anybody. So Mars is just on his own. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just uh, kind of floating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I don't know if that means something. Yeah, but okay. So Mercury always goes with the moon. So you would, you know, you would look at where the moon is daily for a Mercury period. So for instance, uh, once you get past Saturn here, you're in for from 20, 2027 to 2038, a huge chunk of time. It will involve the moon. Where's your moon? Gemini, 10,000. Oh, ooh, career. Ooh, yeah. writing. Ooh, and writing mercury oh honey write that script i know yes. honestly i had a moment like thinking about it i was like i yeah. think this is not just a side hustle like this is gonna pick yeah. up for yeah. sure yeah look well, at yeah, that I mean, oh got... and then you've got the sextile to jupiter sweet okay yeah and that Jupiter on the goes script. with that mercury and then you got some trines and okay so at 37 yeah. i'm gonna sell best damn hallmark script you ever read <laughs> or you might have moved on to something a little more <laughs> media. Yeah, we can always you hope you do have it in the eighth house <laughs> yeah okay so and with jupiter um it's with saturn as well so yeah saturn's pretty wired into your chart now for jill um okay so saturn goes with the sun um uh, mars goes with the moon um mercury goes with mars venus goes with the moon and jupiter goes with the sun and so those are based on just those simple five ptolemaic aspects right we don't use any of the other minor aspects although they're not minor i agree um but that you can pull that in as well um to get a feel for a particular period of time Okay, so now the second part of distributions that uh, was discovered is they also use them with solar revolutions. So I put together our solar revolutions for this year. Ooh. And yeah, so again, the same premise, mine started at nine Libra. So I started in a Mercury year or Mercury period. But so instead of um the ascensional times being um according to the great years of the planets mm -hmm. the ascensional times are they take so let's say that in aries it's 25 ascensional degrees for all of aries so you take that 25 degrees and you divide it by 30 to see how much each day is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then you, I think that's how it works. Anyway, the math is complicated. We have programs. And so for a solar revolution, they're going to move the ascendant all the way around mm. until it gets back to where it was when your next birthday happens. So instead of it just being a portion triggered, it triggers everything in your chart during the course of the year. Now, there is some filters that they do on this, which we will um, come back to probably in the next episode. But let's just look at how you might look at that list from the point of view but of you, your ascendant doesn't go back to Libra for the next year. No, so it stops just before your birthday. Yeah, but they but, but, but they mean, do the distributions okay. for the full year. Yeah, okay. so we each have a list. Let's look at Jill's. Okay, so below the list of the life, this is the life one, okay, is the one for the solar return. Oh my and, gosh. Yeah. And so here it starts. She has Scorpio rising. Let's look at that solar revolution for Jill. There it is there. 
So she starts with late degree Libra. Yours, yours is just bizarre. The fact that it fell on the same degree as your rising. Oh, I know. I noticed. I found that when I did my. Soul. Yeah, yeah. Isn't this just look at this? Twenty-eight was, degrees, Jenna. Twenty-eight degrees. Eight minutes. Fifteen. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. I know. How is that possible? I, when I when I first brought up my soul return chart, I thought I must have done something, something wrong. wrong. <laughs> How this can is this too be? weird. I've never actually seen that happen. Yeah. And yeah, of course, yeah. I've got a, a, it was on the new moon, too. Yes, and the new moon. Yeah. So yeah. Was, yeah, quite interesting. Spooky, okay. spooky. So, whoops, here we go. Let's go here where we can read it. So obviously, she starts with Mars in Libra, and then it switches to Mars in Scorpio. Um, but as you can see, they don't do the age anymore, um, but they show the dates. Right. So again, you would do the partnership. And so yours started because it's exactly the same um, with the last aspect being Saturn. Yeah. So this is Saturn, Mars, uh, Saturn, Mars, and then Saturn or uh, Mars, Mars. And so let's look at where we're at right now. So you both have this list if you want to go back and have a look at it. Uh, so where are we here? We are here. Okay, so you just moved into Taurus. Nice that the weather got good for you <laughs> to make that moon happy. And yeah. so it's Venus Mercury. And then it will be... Um, July 11th, which is tomorrow, it'll switch to Venus Mars and then uh, Venus Jupiter. Yeah, so so the quality <clears throat> is based not on the ascendant per se, but on um, where are we here? On um, blah, 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 blah. so we're all all the way around to here now, hmm. right? So it's eighth house Taurus. <clears throat> and there is another level that dials it in even more. So what they're saying is that um, as it moves through these bounds, there'll be particular signs that are going to be more likely to produce events. Um, and um, it will be part of it will be just the angles created by the ascendant of the solar <clears throat> revolution that's why when you have a repeat this strong then it's totally a year about the original natal promise even though you know obviously in the solar revolution things have shifted well new moon right so yeah so new beginnings new, cycle. new yeah. cycle right yeah totally new cycle which is cool yeah yeah so the other piece that they bring into this is the perfections and um, <clears throat> so we could anticipate before we add those other levels of detail right at the moment that um, eighth house, <clears throat> excuse me. So finances um, with Mercury, possibly. So what's your Mercury rule? Where's Mercury? Mercury's in the fourth house. They're not talking about raising your rent. Maybe because their taxes. Um, my gone. daughter is my landlady. I know. So, yeah, so is she going to come and visit maybe? Well, I'm supposed to go over and visit in Vancouver actually this coming week because Kyla and her crew are coming. Well, okay. Hopefully, okay. hopefully coming out from Winnipeg. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, fourth house family. Um, yeah. So they may be talking about how are they going to take care of their mom as she gets older. I suspect <laughs> they may not say it to you, but I suspect that'll be on the agenda. <laughs> well, I, can't, I think she kind of did that by buying this place. So oh, have, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'd have a place to rent and not have my rent raised or get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Good daughter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm very fortunate there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to Jenna. So this is the life and now this, oh, first of all, let's look at your solar return, which is here. So you have Aquarius rising, which is sixth house. So health, routine, 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 routine to stay healthy, 
Yes. Us take responsibility. <laughs> yes. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Do, do not be confused because well, Saturn can be a taskmaster. Yeah. Saturn there is like we're taking responsibility for it. Yeah, exactly. I'm deep in that already. So I've yeah. quit yeah. smoking two times already this year. So all right. We'll cross our Word. fingers for you. Thank discipline, you. discipline. Yeah. Altering your routine, eh? Like change up the routine. Yeah. 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 It's hard and felt not to. Oh, develop God. those poor habitat poor habits for oh, sure i bet you'd be surrounded by it yeah. Yeah. yeah that kind of environment would make it much more difficult so the other thing that this is a year about is um uh, besides the health thing so your ascendant is so mercury is in the fourth house of this okay so fourth house in terms of creativity it's sort of accessing deep connections right Ooh, and you've got moon opposite this so you could literally create a plot from this chart moon <laughs> opposite mercury uranus a wild and crazy mom <laughs> yeah yeah you you're got not it. wrong <laughs> yeah. you're in your ascendant and saturn yeah exactly that could be the bottom Wait, line. You're yeah. saying like me as no, my mom is the moon opposing yeah. being yeah. this Mercury Uranus person who's like unpredictable and yeah, yeah. And look at little, where your ascendant is. Your ascendant's in the eighth house, so it's got to be dark <laughs> and juicy. <laughs> She's going through some stuff for sure. Oh. Yesterday was my her dad's celebration of life, oh. and she was very very close with her dad. And it's oh, been yeah. like such an emotional journey for her. And she's been trying to put a lot of stuff on me. And I've just been like, boundaries, boundaries. No, yep. no, 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 yep. no, no. This is your dark night of the soul situation. Yeah. Yeah. Ha. Okay. So let's look at where it's at right now. Okay. So we are in July. So again, we've been doing Saturn Sun. That's interesting. Yeah. So son can be father figures. Your son is... It's my dad's birthday tomorrow and we celebrate it today. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's get real specific. Yeah. Saturn, yeah. son. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then... both, both can be symbols for a father. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. That's Saturn true. And, Mar and Mars. Yeah, and yes. his yeah. seeing his son is in Cancer. Okay, so then yeah. we go Mars... So this is, you know, where create cancer is often associated with, um, you know, sort of primordial creative ooze and, you know, pairing that with the sun in the eighth with Mercury. Yeah. Okay. And so writing, writing. Yes. And then, so you get, you get that twice over until July, then it's Mars, Mars. So hopefully okay. the 14th, I don't know what day that is. It's, it's thursday it's thursday. thursday so go running at least that day you probably can't you'll probably be running on set like your life depended on it yeah and then hopefully you can have a really pleasant hookup venus mars <laughs> july the when, 19th uh, july the 19th oh okay what is that like a monday or something that's a tuesday sexy oh. tuesday <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, dear. I'm going away. 26, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It, it goes, goes from the 19th 26. to the 20th. She is totally right. Yeah. Try okay in Venus until okay. Yeah. I mean summertime. Yeah. yeah. Summertime. Yeah. So that's what you want to keep in mind. You want to watch the partner because he keeps traveling. And so typically, I don't know if I already put this the words together right, but the partner. It's like an initiation, initiate something. And then every time it gets repeated, it's like the next step up, the next stage, the next unfolding, whatever. Like it carries its little shtick along. Yeah. Yeah. That's the okay. 19th to 26th. Those are the exact days between my movies. So. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> also fun. Yeah. That's my week off. <laughs> wow. So. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. All righty. Okay. So that is sort of the 
intro to this. Um, I'm thinking that um, if you guys are up for it, you might, Jenna, you might not have time because you're working so much, but um, Jill, if you want to look at um, either one, the life or the solar return and um, see and maybe make some comments about any particular time frame that seems to match the symbolism in your chart for next week. Otherwise, I think what I want to do is put all three pieces together. So it's um, uh, not going to focus much on the life one because that one's pretty big, but I'm going to do the solar revolution, the annual perfection, and the distribution through the bounds with the solar return. And those are sort of the three pieces that you put together to do a yearly forecast for someone. And so I'll probably use one of us for a demonstration and then I will we'll go back to um, the annual perfection thing that we talked, you know, those folks we did last week and take one of those maybe, um, um, what's his face, Christopher Reeves, and uh, look at his solar revolution, look at his annual perfection for his accident that year, and, <clears throat> and the distribution through the bounds and see if that makes sense at all. Um, yeah, because when it comes to this technique, I'm, I'm not selling it as a done deal, but as an exploration as to whether it, it's going to add anything of value. Yeah, I used to find that when I take when I go to conferences, I get all excited about a technique and I go home and try it. And, you know, sometimes it was like, well, it doesn't work for me. It works for them, I guess, but it does work. Well, for me. exactly. And, and other and, ones I go, I like that. I'll incorporate that. But, yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, the symbolism has to be able to speak to the person, um, and it's true. Like Jill said, sometimes you'll you'll get a technique and it's like yeah that's just not working for me nope. yeah so that will be the last part of this series and then we'll have to come up with a new topic okay i'll i'll, I'll, I'll email you all right <laughs> she's got one <laughs> i can tell good excellent <laughs> okay ladies um thank you for bearing with my interruption again I'm, I'm gonna put a song i don't know how to do that <laughs> I, I really don't <laughs> anyway hopefully it wasn't life-threatening <clears throat> i didn't hear the ambulances so the the husband obviously didn't fall off the roof anyway he's an emergency room doctor so he could have saved him so <laughs> i have no idea what i love this storyline <laughs> <laughs> anywho uh thank you for joining thank me you. and to the audience out there thank you for listening this has been astrology today with maureen jenna and jill we will talk to you next week and in the meantime just a reminder you have been listening to cjmp 90.1 fm cafet region community radio station bye ladies bye, bye. Lady, there we go. Yeah.